In this one, we're going to talk about what the expansion device does. Now, I put up here a couple of other parts. I got the condenser and I got the evaporator up here, and they have an expansion valve right there. Now, we call it an expansion valve. It could be a thermostatic expansion valve. It could be a capillary tube. It could be a small orifice. Uh, I'll show you a couple of these things. Okay, that is the smallest one. It's just a little doohickey with a hole in it. I have other videos that show this a little closer, but that's just a, a, a restriction. That's all it is. And that's all it ever has to be. This one here is a thermostatic expansion valve, got all sorts of controls on it. This one here has been cut apart. Uh, and we'll get into that later on how it works. But it's still a restrictive device. So, this is put in here to reduce pressure. But I have high pressure liquid here. Bottom of the condenser, liquid line, coming here. I have a high pressure liquid. I'm going to reduce that to a low pressure liquid with this device. Uh, I don't show the compressor in here, but the compressor is actually sucking on this thing. It's usually not a negative pressure, negative atmospheric pressure, but it's a lower pressure than here because this high pressure comes up to here and all that, uh, that liquid can't come through there really easily. So it's restricted in how much will come through. And that feeds the evaporator. This thing here is really important in how this thing works because its characteristics determine not only the evaporator pressure and the condenser pressure, it does regulate the two, uh, but also the actual amount of refrigerant that gets into the evaporator. So this thing can have a tremendous effect on the system and how the system works. So it may be very simple in its design, but very complex in what it does. Now, you might say, well, why, why do we need to change the pressure? Okay, we're changing the pressure to a lower pressure so that it can evaporate at a low temperature. This is pressure temperature stuff. You should already know this by the time you're looking here. But high pressure liquid, low pressure liquid, when this gets to a lower pressure, it is going to evaporate at, that, at a lower temperature. So this device can restrict that flow and restrict the temperature of the evaporator. It also determines the temperature of the condenser because the amount of refrigerant that is let through determines how much liquid is in this condenser. Now if we, if we looked at this where this restricted a, a very much, very high restriction, then liquid is going to start backing up in this condenser. Remember I told you that the condenser, it kind of automatically works. It is going to condense one way or another. So uh, if there's enough flow going through here to keep the level down, say the level down here someplace of liquid, then you'll have a certain temperature here. If the liquid level goes up because this doesn't restrict very much, or this restricts too much, then the condenser is going to have a higher temperature because there's less surface area. So this thing has a lot to do with both the condenser and the evaporator. Now the evaporator, when the refrigerant starts flowing into it, it's going to start boiling because at lower pressure. So it's going to flow in here and start boiling away. Now if there's a whole lot of refrigerant is let through this thing, then it's going to fill this evaporator with liquid. That could get back to the compressor and damage the compressor. 
if it restricts far more and there's not very much liquid going in here then the amount of refrigerant that's in this thing is evaporated off early and a lot of the evaporator is not used for anything it's just gas so there's a lot of things this thing can affect you could you could affect the amperage draw of the compressor you could affect uh, the head pressure because that pressure coming into the condenser if I restrict a lot less condensers available for condensing so it's going to go higher so the head pressure go higher it can change the suction pressure the low side pressure by how much refrigerant it lets through and if it lets too much through it could damage the compressor so this thing does a lot of stuff very simple device that does a lot of stuff and there's going to be more on this I'm going to talk more about what different charges will do and and so on okay and that's about it on this one obviously there's lots more to uh, to look at on these things and I'm going to be talking about compressors too that's it on this one